on this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the March 21st update on Motor Vessel Ever Forward. I'm your host, Sam Mercaglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. So did a big update yesterday on Ever Forward. I just want to do a quick one today because there was some new information that came out after I posted my video yesterday, along with some video. So let's go first and check on Ever Forward. So this is the latest on marine traffic of Ever Forward. Uh, still aground outside of Baltimore between Baltimore and the Bay Bridge in Annapolis. Uh, if we zoom in here, the big difference is the arrival of several vessels in the area around her. And as we'll show you here, you'll see right here, uh, Bering Dawn, a tugboat, and then this, the dredge uh, Dale Pyatt. Now the Bering Dawn probably has with it a, a hopper barge where the spoil from the Dale Pilot is being put into. And I got a video that will show you that. So they're dredging off the aft side of the vessel right now where the vessel had come in. Meanwhile, up here at the bow, one of the things we see here is the Charles James, the Thomas D. Whitey, Whitty. I got a lot of people telling me how to say this name. So I apologize. I think you say it, Whitty. Uh, they are also bringing out hopper barges for spoil to be dumped into, and then the, uh, the dredge Oyster Bay right here. And so these are the dredges that went into operation yesterday around Ever Forward, which is outlined right here. I want to show you a video that was posted uh, that I think uh, really gives you a good insight on, on the situation. So this is a video posted yesterday by Baltimore Ship Watchers. Uh, a great image here, and I want to put into context some of this. So obviously here is Ever Forward. You're looking basically eastward from the area on the west on, on the west side of the channel. So notice right here again, this is the kind of the longer distance view you'll see there. The Oyster Bay, which has the large crane off the bow, that is the dredge that's working off the starboard side bow, and then they sped up this video right here, and then. The uh, Pyatt is working off the stern. Uh, the Pyatt, Dale Pyatt, is the larger of the two drudges. It's got a uh, scoop, a clamshell that can haul about 60 cubic yards of material. The Oyster Bay on the bow can take off about 15 cubic yards of material. So what this tells me is, is really a couple of interesting things. I want to read this story first from uh, G Captain Mike Schuller. Dredging around the stuck ever forward kicked off over the weekend with two dredges now working to clear mud from around the ship's hull. Port of Baltimore Executive Director William Doyle said dredging commenced Sunday, led by Don John Smith, the appointed salver in Cashman Dredging and Marine Construction. AIS showed two dredges, Don John's Oyster Bay and Cashman's Dale Pyatt on scene. Uh, and then it goes on to note this information. Uh, this is from Evergreen itself. The team is mobilizing all available local tugboats to join in the refloating operation. After sufficient mud is excavated, the refloating operation will begin using tugboats and the power of the main engine. The rescue team will carry out the plan utilizing the most beneficial high tide period in the port area. So I had a couple of notes come in. I really want to uh, mention them because I think it's really important. Number one, the tide, the lunar tide here is only about a foot. So you don't get a lot of lunar tide here. However, what you do get is a lot of tide being caused by storms because the Chesapeake Bay is a big cul-de-sac. If you get a storm from the south blowing up into the bay, it pushes water up in the bay. So you can get as much as a six foot rise in this area if you need be. And I think that's a, a fairly significant issue. If you can get a six foot rise, that helps. The other issue that I have here is where they're dredging. So on the left side of your screen there, you see the Dale Pyatt. The Dale Pyatt, Pilot is basically, Pyatt, sorry, is dredging the aft end. And what they're trying to do is remove mud from the stern. Again, she's aground in anywhere from 24 to 18 feet of water. She draws 42 feet of water. Uh, we know the bow is showing a draft of about 11 meters. That's about 33 feet, uh, 35 feet right there. So uh, she's pushed up a couple of feet up out of the water because of that. The rest of it is in the mud. So the Pyatt is dredging on the stern. Now they're using clamshell dredgers. 
these are big scoops, kind of like you would see. Uh, the best analogy I ever have on this is those uh, games that kids play in amusement halls where they can go in and kind of grab themselves a, a toy that's kind of that, like a big clamshell. So they're digging in, scooping up, and putting that spoil into barges. The problem is they can't get under the vessel with these type of dredges, meaning I'm not exactly sure how they're going to be able to get in around the prop and propeller. There was an early report saying the prop and propeller are clear, but over time, silt's going to kind of come in there. Uh, I assume that the sea chest, the water intakes for the vessel is clear so that they can get water into the main engine, meaning they're going to do it. The other thing that's really of note is the fact that the Oyster Bay, the barge and dredge on the, on the right, is clearing mud off the port side forward. That makes me think they're going to try to pull the bow into the channel and then use the propeller aft to kind of push them off. They may want to try to twist the vessel. If they were going to just pull it straight back, which is a long path for them. It's actually the longer path. It's, it's because of the way the ship came into the uh, channel here, it's actually the furthest away. Uh, this is the latest graphic uh, from John, Skull, uh, John Scott Relton. He posted this out here. So Ever Forward is right here. And again, she came, she came off right here through the channel and nudged herself in here. So her stern is closest to the channel. The bow is furthest away. And the Oyster Bay right now is digging in this position off the, the ship's starboard bow right there. And so there may be an attempt to pull her into the channel in some way or pivot her. We're not exactly sure what the dredge and what the salvers are trying to do with her, but that's what they're doing right now on the bow. So she's not that far out of the channel. Again, her stern is closer to the channel because she, she went out kind of diagonally out of the channel at this time. So they may want to do it. Now, one of the concerns that we've talked about here is the change in the center of gravity of this vessel because the ship is up on the bottom. And we know it has a list of port already just a slight bit. The stability of the vessel is in question. I had people correcting me for, for I, I, I apologize. I'm trying not to dog you down with a lot of technology and, and, and terminology here from metacentric height, center of buoyancy, center of gravity. But suffice it to say, when you lift the vessel up out of the water, you change its basically center of mass and center of gravity. And buoyancy is not acting on it the same way. The fear you have to have is if you dredge along the port side of the vessel, which is happening right now, the Oyster Bay right here, dredging along the port side of the vessel, and you try to pull it into deeper water, there's a potential for the vessel to roll to starboard. And because the buoyancy isn't acting on it the way it normally does, you have to be concerned about rolling. And so there's a couple of things you can do. You can remove weight from it. The easiest way to remove is ballast, but she probably doesn't have a lot of ballast on board. Even though she's in a fairly light condition, she offloaded containers in Savannah. She offloaded containers in Baltimore. She was going to offload containers in Norfolk. And I know she seems like she has a lot of containers on board, but a lot of them are empty. She probably hasn't loaded ballast because to load ballast, you have to suck in water from the environment you're in run it through your, your ballast water treatment plant, and then deposit it in your ballast tanks. You tend not to want to take ballast water from brown water, from coastal water, from muddy water. You like to take your ballast water out in the deep water. Well, do you want to take ballast water before coming into Baltimore? Because again, you, you're concerned about your draft. She's drawing 42 feet on leaving. The Craig Hill Channel is only 51 feet deep. Uh, no telling what her draft was going into Baltimore, probably deeper. So she probably hasn't ballasted yet. And she was probably planning to ballast when she was leaving Norfolk or leaving New York before her Trans-Pacific voyage back, which means that the vessel probably came in in a fairly loaded, uh, uh, without a lot of ballast on board, meaning there's not a lot to pump out. That leaves fuel oil. Now you can pump fuel oil out, but that's from the very bottom of the ship too, which means the center of gravity is going to get even higher on this vessel, which means there has to be a discussion about getting containers off, particularly full containers. The empty containers don't do a lot. Again, an empty container weighs about, uh, you know, about 8,000 pounds. So it's not a tremendously heavy container, whereas a full one could be up to 60,000 pounds, much more substantial right there. 
So, but to get that off, look again at the booms and cranes right here on the dredges. You can see how high, they don't even come to the top of the stacks. So that means you're not gonna be able to access it. You're gonna to need to bring a much larger barge in with a crane and do it. The other thing is the speed of these dredges. These are not fast dredging right there. I had somebody who gave me some statistics on it and uh, it's in the show notes for the last video I did. But you can see right here, again, this is speeded up. How much are you able to load? That's the biggest one there, 60 cubic feet. I don't know what speed they're at here in this video, but you'll see it takes time to do this. This is not a quick process. Ever Given in the Suez was freed in six days, but the Masur, one of the dredges they brought in, can move 70,000 cubic yards of sand an hour. Again, Oyster Bay can move 15 cubic yards each clamshell closure. And ever how long it takes you to cycle through those clamshells, uh, that's going to take you time. Uh, plus, you got to keep barges and tugs coming out. The other thing is, are they bringing in salvage tugs? The tugs you see right here and in the Port of Baltimore are pretty small. They don't have a big amount of bollard pull. You're going to need a lot of pull to get this vessel off. Again, the grounding force on this vessel was estimated to be 20 to 24,000 metric tons. A normal tug has a pull of about 60 tons. So the question really becomes what else is Smith doing in conjunction with Evergreen to do the salvage of this vessel to get this vessel off? The high tide for the month of March just passed. You don't get another lunar high tide, the, the, the spring tide, until April 18th. Obviously, if you get a storm coming in, pushing water in the Chesapeake, that'll be even better to do it. Uh, Port of Baltimore is still open. We still see traffic going back and forth. Matter of fact, you saw a Maersk container ship go by there. Uh, they are slowing down at the turn right there, down to eight to nine knots. Uh, obviously, they want to kick a lot of wash onto ever forward for fear that that wash is going to basically fill back in the holes they're dredging at this time. But they still have vessels coming past. And understanding filling, a, you know, emptying, you know, dredging is an, is an all laborious concept. It takes a lot of time. And more importantly, as you take dirt out, dirt goes back in. And uh, one of the things that I would question is the positivity of, of these two dredgers. They're great. They're fantastic from Don John Marine and Cashman are great. But again, it goes to the larger issue that we need infrastructure in the United States, not just container cranes, not just ports, but we need larger tugs, we need salvage vessels, we need power dredgers, we need a lot. We need to be investing in the United States. And one of the things this showcases is ports taking vessels, Neo Panamax vessels that can handle the new lane of the Panama Canal, but not quite ready yet for a contingency like this happening. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll keep you up to date as new information comes out. If you haven't had an opportunity yet, please subscribe, like, the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Leave a comment. If I get something wrong, please critique. I am not perfect. I am not an engineer. I am a former merchant mariner turned maritime historian who's trying to convey to everybody what's going on with the marine salvage in the United States backdoor of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, if you can, share it across social media. And if you can support the channel, become a Patreon. That helps us do this channel. To our next video, Sal. Signing off tomorrow, Tuesday, March 22nd, we will have the, uh, our weekly episode of What the Ship, top five news stories across the industry. Until then, this is Sal signing off.